Hello, my name is Dean Alhoss and today I'm going to run through with you the ways in which we can use the final book of original entry, the Journal Day book. The final book of original entry is known as the Journal Day book. The Journal Day book is really only used for transactions that cannot be recorded in the other six books of original entry. So if we have a transaction, for example, such as the purchase of a non-current fixed asset, or if we're using um, the journal to record our correction of errors, bad debts, the opening balances of a new set of books, or if any other transaction doesn't fit into your sales day book, purchases day book, returns inwards or outwards day books, cash book, petty cash book, then we use the journal to record the double entry. The journal, as the name suggests, is really just a business diary and you can use it to record any double entry you like, just so that when the chief accountant comes to do the T accounts and the final accounts for the business, he or she has a reference point which they can use to make sure that they are finishing off those accounts correctly. So the easiest way to run through how we would use the journal as a book of original entry is to um, go through some examples of how we would actually use that book. So the first example we can see here is when we purchase um, or we sell a fixed asset on credit. Now we can't use the sales or purchases day book because of course that's only for inventory, not for fixed assets. So we face a situation where we've got nowhere to record the sale or purchase of a fixed asset. And that's where the journal comes in. As a diary, we would put that information into the journal book of original entry. So here we can see very clearly that we bought on credit from Toolstation a fixed asset, in which case this one would be a machine, and it cost us $600 on the 1st of July. So we open up the following columns in the journal. Obviously, we put the title at the top, the date, details, and a debit and credit column. The double entry for buying a machine on credit obviously would be to credit tool station because it's going to come out of their account and we would debit our machinery account because what comes into our business will be a fixed asset of a machine now when we write the journal we must always put obviously the date but the debit entry always goes first so as we're debiting our machinery account it's going to go on the left-hand side of our T account under the debit column. The credit entry, which is tool station, would be put under the detail. And of course, the $600 is going to come out on the credit side of their particular T account. There's something very peculiar about um, the journal is that the credit entry is always slightly what we call indented. That means that we write the T for tool station, the first letter of the credit entry under the second letter, which in this case is A. All right, and the reason for that is so that when you do a long list, you can easily see all the debit entries and the credit details um, in se slightly separate columns. And the final part of the journal entry would be the narrative. Now, the narrative in English basically means a written description. So you just rewrite what has been given to you as the transaction in your exam question. So in this case, the transaction was given to you here, the machine bought on credit from Toolstation, and we just write an extra piece of information for the chief accountant. We purchased a machine on credit. The second example is a sale of a motor vehicle that we no longer need. Again, even though we're selling it on credit and we've created a debtor, we can't put that into our sales day book because it's not a sale of stock. We don't sell motor vehicles all right, in this particular business. Now, there are businesses that do sell motor vehicles, but in this case, it's a fixed asset, so it's got to go into your journal. And again, we do the same thing. We've sold it for $300. We've got a date here of the 2nd of July. So we put the date in, the debit entry first, which is to A daily because it's going to go out of our business. 
under the motor vehicle account on the credit side and into a daily's account. So the debit of $300 would go under the debits column. We then indent the M under the D and the motor vehicle account will be credited for 300 and we write a simple narrative which in this case sale of motor vehicle credits to a daily. The next example we're going to look at which refers to using the uh, journal to correct uh, bad debts. Basically if we um, have a debt that we know is no longer going to be paid we have to write it off. Usually that's because we may have done business with another company that's gone bankrupt, has gone out of business. So we know that we are not going to receive that money back. When you're writing off a bad debt, um, it's like the money's come out of your pocket. If you've given goods to a company that is no longer able to pay you, then effectively you've given away something for free and that is going to have to come off as an expense from your profit and loss account. Um, so in this example, a bad debt to HG Wells was 125 and because bad debts are going to have to come out as an expense in our profit and loss account, they will be on the debit side on the date, which is the September 31st. And HG Wells was the debtor who didn't pay us, so that's going to go out of his or her account. And then, of course, we simply write a narrative. HG Wells' account is written off as a bad debt. What we mean by written off is it's kind of the accountant acknowledging, saying, yep, yeah, I don't think we're going to get the money back from HG Wells. The final example I'm going to go through with you is where a debtor owes the firm money, but is not able to pay with cash or through money from the bank. And the business that we're doing the accounts for accepts some other form of payment. So it might be that, for example, rather than paying us cash, they give us a fixed asset, such as a motor vehicle, um, which is the case in this example. Um, K-Man, he owes us $4,000. He isn't able to pay us cash, but he does give us a motor vehicle on the 5th of October as full payment for the money owing to the company. So here, again, it wouldn't fit into any of the other books of original entry, so we simply look at what we gain against where the money comes from. And so K. Young is going to pay us, so it's going to go out of his debtor account, and what we gain into the business is $4,000 worth of motor vehicle. And we put that we have accepted a motor vehicle as full payment of K. Young's debt. This will be very important because otherwise the accountant will probably get quite confused as to why we've debited the motor vehicle account. And so the narrative which explains that we've accepted that instead of money as form of payment for the debt is very, very important to list or to record. Thanks for listening. If you did find this tutorial useful, then please do subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you like what we're doing here at www.igcseaccounts.com, then please hit the like button.